All right, so full disclosure, this week's video is gonna be a little bit different from the rest because I didn't have a lot of time to do some way too complicated mathematical analysis with some super elaborate jokes woven throughout. I was just a little busy this week for two reasons. One, it was a holiday weekend here in the state and I was spending some time with my family. And two, I've been playing way too much Terraria with some of my buddies from mine from college and totally neglected working on any real video. So today, I'm gonna try and capitalize on my laziness by making content about the very thing that distracted me from making content to begin with. So, when you think about it, maybe this sort of 40 chess play isn't too different from the usual stuff I do after all. <laughs> anyway, today, I'm sitting and I'm talking about Terraria and why I think it's better than Minecraft. Richard, hit that intro. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, I'm aware that the very premise of this video is kind of dumb. Despite the fact that most people know Terraria as, oh yeah, that, uh, that 2D Minecraft game. The two really aren't that similar at all. But be honest, if the video was called, eh, hey, Terraria is pretty fun, isn't it? You probably wouldn't have clicked on it. So do me a solid and hold off on hitting post on those scathing comments for just a couple of minutes. I love Minecraft, I truly do, and I know it gets way more traffic on YouTube than Terraria, which is why I put it in the title. First, a little history lesson on my experience with the game so far. Me and my old college roommates started up a multiplayer world just a couple of weeks ago. Most of us had never touched it before, but we've played a whole lot together since. We're pretty close to finishing the game, heck, by the time you're watching this, we might have already beaten the final boss, but we were playing on normal mode and I'm sure there's loads of obscure secrets that we haven't uncovered yet. So if I say something that makes me sound like a total noob, that's because I am. When you first start playing, I'll admit that the Minecraft similarities are pretty apparent. You're in a blocky 2D world and your first objective is to cut down trees so you can make a pickaxe, so you can mine ores to make better armor and equipment to survive the hordes of zombies and monsters that appear at night. <laughs> now, admittedly, that does sound like a lot of similarities, like the whole game basically. But once you get into it, you find that the two really are pretty different. I was surprised to find that at the end of the day, Terraria is really more of a boss rush game than a building and exploration game. While Minecraft only has one main boss at the very end, plus a few optional ones thrown in, Terraria has well over a dozen, most of which are mandatory to beat the game. And boy oh boy, are they weird. Like. Literally, the first 20 minutes of this game is like, oh, look, we've got this pretty little world with squirrels and flowers everywhere. Oh, watch out, because at night, some cute little chibi zombies might try and give you a hug, and then you might get attacked by this floating bloody eyeball that turns into a big mouth and bum rushes your friend right in front of you. <laughs> Whoops! There's a real smorgasbord of boss designs to be found here. Like, one minute, it seems like they're going for a sort of Lovecraft and Eldritch Horror vibe. The next thing you know, you're fighting robot skeletons and then Olmec shows up to tell you about the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. And then you might just get jumped by Deer Clops who, well, I mean, they can't all be winners. What the f With four people, none of the bosses were particularly hard, especially once we started hoarding wormhole potions like the little gremlins that we are. So if you died, you could just warp right back into the fray once you respawned. But they still were pretty fun. That being said, while the game does, for the most part, let you gun it from one boss to the other, if you wanted, if you don't take the proper time to prepare and get your gear up to stuff, well, the Duke Fish Run over here is gonna have a real fun time with you. And that is a perfect segue into my next section. Look at me, being good at my job. Oh, come on, you're one to talk, Richard. When you aren't fighting bosses, most of your time is spent trying to get stronger. All right, sounds pretty simple. Just dig up some better ore for stronger weapons and armor. Maybe find a heart crystal or two to increase your life. Easy as that. Why is this the most comprehensive and complicated wiki I've ever seen? Yeah, Terraria took one look at Minecraft's simple ore progression for all of its armor and four, but really two weapon types, and they just laughed. There are so many items in this game. Like, like guys, there are so many. 
Look at this wiki page. This is just all the armor types. And the armor is probably the least exciting of the gear types. If you take a gander at the weapon section, you'll see that it's absolutely insane. You got your classic swords, spears, maces, boomerangs, yo-yos, lances, all of which function completely differently. And then you've also got bows, magic wands, throwing knives, guns, magical summons, this little pirate guy that will attack anything on sight. And even within the different weapon types, it's not just sword, stronger sword, even stronger sword. No, instead, each different sword has its own unique features like shooting at a beam, letting you go invisible for big crit damage, or keyblade. It, it's just a keyblade. And every single weapon type has this sort of variety. So it's super easy to find a weapon that you like the best and just run with it. Personally, I'm a boomerang bro for life. But believe it or not, the weapons aren't even my favorite part of Terraria's gear system. That would be accessories? Ex yes, please. Fine, I couldn't find a way to work that one in naturally. Accessories are items that you can equip separate from your armor and weapons. What do they do? <laughs> everything. They do everything. You are one that lets you walk on water? They got that. You are one that boosts your defense? They got that. You are one that releases a swarm of bees to attack anything that hurts you? They got that. You want a sniper scope? They got that. You want something that sets all of your weapons on fire? fire they got that you want something that turns you into a werewolf at night they got that you want one that literally lets you fly <laughs> well i got like 50 of those you can have five accessories equipped at any given time and the best part is that there are loads of accessories and weapons that synergize together basically letting you make your own class that you can change at literally any time right now i fancy myself a flaming boomer shooty shoot guy multi-class patent pending not content with the accessories you have well then build yourself a tinkerer's table and try your hand at combining some this seems like a very simple feature at first like oh Hey, I can combine my Hermes boots with these rocket boots I just bought to make the new and improved Spectre boots. But then you check the wiki and see that if you get just a few more items, you could upgrade those to the even better lightning boots. And then you keep clicking through the wiki and find this massive tree of all the items you need to make the best boots in the game and specifically how to combine them all. And next thing you know, you and your friend are tearing hell itself apart brick by brick to see you can find that lava charm first because you both need lava lava waiters, I swear. <laughs> what seems like a pretty simple way to free up an accessory slot or two quickly turns into essentially a side quest system as you scour the land in search of whatever rare item you need to get to that next level in the tree. This is great for giving everyone their own personal goals separate from the group and just killing the bosses and calling it a day. And it makes it so everyone has their own unique stuff they can do and aren't just the same netherite clad sword swinging block guy. Instead, one of my friends has been in a long quest to get the strongest sword in the game while I had the very simple idea to try and turn my magma stone into some fire gauntlets just because, I don't know, I thought it sounded cool and ended up exploring literally all of the underground jungle biome for hours and hours for some damn feral claws which aren't even supposed to be that rare they just weren't showing up only to find out that my friend had found them just randomly days ago and made the very item that i was trying to get and he didn't even appreciate Oh yeah, all the weapons and accessories also have this modifier system where they can give you different boosts and debuffs depending on what little descriptor it has before it. But I think this is really just a way for the goblin tinkerer NPC to scam money off of you. You hear that? Nort? I'm on to you. You can craft weapons and certain accessories from mine materials, but if you want that cool stuff, the best way to do it is just by exploring. If you just walk left or right, you'll come across all sorts of interesting biomes and new enemy types that might drop you some stuff, but the elaborate underground cave systems are really where it's at. Seriously, these underground tunnels are massive. If you just pick a cave that you found on the surface and keep exploring it, you could easily find yourself on the other end of the map. Or if you venture very, very deep, literally in hell itself. Now, admittedly, Terraria's worlds are pretty small compared to Minecraft's 
infinite playgrounds. You can run from border to border pretty easily, but what they lack in sprawling expanses, they make up for in sheer density. You can't go more than a few minutes without finding some cool structure, a new enemy type, this weird purple plant that I think would just look lovely in our house, don't you think? Huh, wonder what that, uh, that health bar down there is all about. This keeps the game from feeling grindy and slowing the pace to a halt as you strip mine for just a few pieces of diamond, unless of course you're looking for some feral claws and then you can kiss your time goodbye, apparently. Not only is exploring good for getting good loot, but it's also just fun filling in your map with all the tunnels you've explored, like you're in one of those blue gel ant farms. You know the ones I'm talking about? You know, you know the things? Why do we all think having pet ants would be cool? You can also purchase cool items from various NPCs that will move into your home base if you want, but let's be honest, by this point, Nort has bled your pockets dry because you were trying to get that demonic modifier on your hammer. You're lucky there's no friendly fire in this game, my friend. Oh yeah, you could also try fishing for loot, you know, if you don't mind sitting there barely interacting for hours. Seriously, why does every single game feel the need to include fishing in it? I've never had fun fishing in a video game. It's always boring. It's just bad quick time events. It takes forever and yet they always put it in. Pokemon's got fishing. Fire Emblem's got fishing. Hades has fishing. They put fishing in Hades. Why? It's all safe to say I threw my lore in one pond and thought, man, I hate this and never did it again. To play devil's advocate for the arbitrary argument that I've invented for the sake of having a clickbaity title, while I personally had more fun with the combat and exploration in Terraria, Minecraft's gotta be in the building department by a lot. Like, I guess you probably could get really into building in Terraria, they've got a ton of different cosmetic blocks, and I like how your character is two blocks wide by three tall instead of one by two like in Minecraft, so you can have a bit more fidelity in your builds, but I never really got into building for aesthetics in Terraria, which is pretty much all I do in Minecraft. Maybe it's because Terraria has a lot more structure and goals built into it, so you don't need to find other ways to occupy your time, or maybe it's just a lot easier to get creative in a 3D space, but me and my friends kind of just, I don't know, built a ramshackle stack of boxes for a home, stuffed it with all the random crap we found, like any good video game hoarder does, and took off exploring and kicking ass with all those pretty wood types laying forgotten in our storage room basement. Oh, how have I not talked about storage yet? Because good lord, it's so much better here. In Minecraft, storage and inventory management is... Well, I'll just say it, it's horrendous. It's a crime. Yeah, it looks like you got a lot of space here until you go mining and five minutes later, it's filled up with stacks of cobble and a bunch of random andesite and gravel because you can only carry 64 of each item in each slot. So you gotta run all the way back to your base. And by this point, you're so frustrated that you just dump everything in the first chest you see, one stack at a time, I might add, just to get back to playing the actual game. But then three days later, you come back looking for you put that iron and you can't find it because organizing everything here feels like you're getting a colonoscopy. So you just say, screw it and run back down in the mine to get more. And before you know it, you're doing the ugly sob thing because you have so much God damn granite and you just throw. Compare that to Terraria. First up, you can carry up to 9,000 999 of most blocks in the game in a single stack, like you should. And if you've got more than 9,000 of a single block in your inventory at any given time, you're doing something wrong. But after a good long exploration session, sure, your inventory might get filled up with different cool weapons and crafting materials. So you simply pull out your magic mirror, the best item in the game, by the way, you warp on home in a single click, get within the general vicinity of your chest room, click this button and boom. <laughs> it's beautiful. This quick sort to chest feature is literally the best thing that any game has ever introduced. It basically just stacks everything in your inventory into chests that already have that item. So everything is in one place. Sure, you do need to do a little bit of sorting beforehand if you want everything to be neat and organized, but you can sleep soundly knowing that your lazy future self isn't gonna say screw it and just start throwing things in a random chest and ruin the whole system that you just sacrificed five years of your life to set up. 
And the fact that you can name all your chests makes it pretty easy to do. Or, you know, you could always just bribe your friend with all the life crystal you found while tearing that jungle apart and make him do it. Damn, I love this button. You know what, Richard? Roll it back. Let's see it again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the good stuff. At the end of the day, is Terraria truly better than Minecraft? That's really up to you. I'm not trying to start any wars here. All I know is that I've had a ton of fun playing this game with my friends. I will say as a caveat, playing any game multiplayer is going to be fun, no matter what it is. And running around solo to get footage for this video was kind of boring. I don't see myself ever doing a solo world or anything like that, but I do know that my friends and I haven't even beaten the game yet, and we're already talking about how we should totally try and start a new expert world when we do. And if that's not the sign of a good game, pff, I don't know what is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a goblin to kill. I'll teach you not to scam me, Nort, you little son of a bitch! Hey, I realized I forgot to script an outro for this video, so, uh, uh, subscribe? If you, if you made it all the way to the end, I don't usually do stuff like this. So if you want to see more like this, too bad. <laughs> Take it easy.